Hey guys, what's up? As you guys know, it's Unicorn Dust Designs. I am Sammy. I like to do things DIY and wood sign, as you can see. Um, today I'm going to be bringing you some easy farmhouse decor. Um, these are very simple. I even added in an extra bonus one because I kind of felt like it was cheating because it's so easy. So I'm going to add in another one. So it'll actually be four DIYs, I think. So we are going to go ahead and get into those and I hope you guys enjoy it. And oh, this natural lighting does so much for my skin. What is up, girlfriend? Okay, now we can get into it. For our first project, we're going to be making this Rise and Shine Mother Clucker sign. It is so adorable, very farmhouse. I am going to be taking these bamboo cutting boards, which you guys, I wish when they were out, I bought like all of them because now you can't find any. Um, and we really chalk paint, a stencil I made, um, ribbon of your choice. I'm just taking a chippy brush, you guys, and I am going over this messy. That's what's nice about farmhouse. You don't have to be nice and neat. It could be distressed. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm all about that. And now I'm using the heat gun because I don't have the patience and I got to do it when the kids are busy. And as usual, I am going in with my favorite brush from the Dollar Tree. And I dabbed some of this mineral Waverly chalk paint off, but eh, I kind of went in heavy handed. But you know what? It all works out in the end because once it's all put together, this looks so good. It looks like wood grain to me and I absolutely love it. And this is my first time trying the mineral chalk paint. Love the color. I'm going to be using it a lot more. And I am just dabbing it in my lid, dabbing it on my cloth, and then going in with it. Usually I don't go that heavy handed, but I'm okay with it this time. And again, my heat gun. You guys, you gotta pick one of these up if you're a crafter and you don't, oh, can you tell I'm a mom? I'm like doing the heat gun, I'm twisting the top on. <laughs> okay, and here's our decal. I get all of my vinyl from um, MidwestHTV.com. They are a smaller company, their customer service is amazing. Um, I, the shipping is super fast. And for contact paper, I just use the Dollar Tree contact paper. Works great. Doesn't come in a huge roll or anything, so that's the only downfall. But um, if you're like me and you reuse your contact paper, then you will be fine. And here I'm just applying it, pressing it down, making sure it is securely on there. And then we are going to remove that contact paper to see this beautiful, glossy, blue um stencil left on there i really love this stencil in the saying and i love that i chose blue because i mean i'm all about the black and white trust me but mama loves some color okay so then we're gonna go in with this bow you guys i am an addict on facebook marketplace i'll get back into that hold on so i'm using twine i had already drilled holes in these um i would have to measure to see how like where i put them on there um, but I did it with actually all my boards because they were supposed to be made for something else and never happened. So I'm tying this because I'm going to use it as my hanger. Cut that excess off and we don't have to worry about it because our bow is going to cover that. Then you guys for the bow, I'm sorry I tried to slow this down but couldn't. I am going to make this into a loop basically. I am folding it in half so I could see my center mark. And I'm going to overlap the two pieces in the middle. That way, when I scrunch it up in the middle and tie it off, I have both pieces inside there so that my ribbon or my bow doesn't fall apart. And right there, I didn't have it overlapping enough, so I had to take it out, retie it, because you don't want that bow coming apart on you. And um, this is a wire fabric ribbon. I don't know, you guys. I get everything on Facebook Marketplace. Some lady was selling a bunch of her ribbon for like 10 bucks. Of course I got it. This is the boxwood from Walmart. It is 97 cents. I haven't been able to find it in a while. Um, let me know if you could see it at yours because I have not been able to find it for a couple months now. Um, now I'm just gonna hot glue this on. 
I kind of gauged where I wanted it to be by putting the bow on and playing around with it first. And then I'm gonna put two on each one. And that's why I put my stencil, or my, sorry, my decal so far down because I knew I wanted this greenery and the bow, so I know I needed the room. And I'm using my finger silicone cover from Dollar Tree. These are awesome. I think they come in a pack of three, so grab them if you find them because they work great. And I like how even though I have it on my finger, I just use my other finger to press it down. I'm a hot mess, you guys. And then we are going to put our middle on our bow, which is super, super easy. Um, I do make a lot of different bows. If you guys are interested in seeing how I make bows, please let me know down below and I can do that. And the easiest part, hot gluing this, you guys, and we're gonna be done. And it came out so cute. Now I wanna make a bigger version of this with um, pine wood that I have. I think it would look so cute. Okay, on to DIY and number two, these farmhouse coasters, you guys, these are so adorable and so easy. I am obsessed with them. So you're gonna need the cork board, Mod Podge, your tiles, I get mine from Home Depot. And then I got this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby and they were having like I don't know, six for a dollar, or I don't know, something, or they're 69 cents. Um, so I'm just measuring my tile, which these are 4.25 by 4.25, so I actually cut my paper down to four by four. That way I don't have to worry about the paper sticking up because the tiles do have like rounded edges, so I just want it to sit on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make Four of these I'm gonna keep all my scraps because you never know when those are gonna come in handy and I am going to be very generous with this Mod Podge you guys okay we're going to put that on make sure your tiles are clean they don't have any debris on them or anything because you will see that and then I am putting the Mod Podge on our scrapbook paper and then I'm gonna apply that onto our tile now it does kind of move around a bit when you are first putting it on there so as you'll see me doing i kind of hold the bottom in place while i'm putting that first layer on top and then it's good to go it doesn't move um, make sure you're getting those bubbles before you put this top layer on out of the paper or else you're going to have a bubbly mess on your hands so this is nice and smooth. I am making sure to get those edges so that they do not pop up. And I'm going to repeat this for all four of our coasters. And you guys can leave it. I think um, on the other coaster tutorial I did, do you guys know that I love coasters? <laughs> um, so this is how it looks just with the Mod Podge, which you can totally stop there. I'm just extra, okay? So I'm using this clear glaze. I saw this on Pinterest, so this was my first time trying it, but you guys, I love it. Make sure there is nothing on there. Now, I am putting this on a piece of wood. That way, I can transfer it to another spot to dry and don't have to touch the actual tile itself. These, you just put on even coats. Make sure you're overlapping, and it'll look like glass on top of it. And then I'm going to repeat that with all four of them. And if you guys see bubbles or anything, you could go over it one more time. You see that glassy effect it gives it? And I feel like it's another layer of protection too if you're gonna have watery you know, glasses on it, things like that. So now I'm taking the sticky um, crafter square, um, what do you call it, cork board or whatever. The only thing that's unfortunate about these is you can only get two squares out of them because of like the rectangle shape that they sell them in but I'm not gonna complain because I could use that for a ton of different crafts. So I'm gonna cut four of these out. You guys, I'm trying different angles on these cam this camera, you know, starting out with YouTube. So if there's one you prefer, let me know which one looks better because I don't, I don't know. Okay, so I got all four of these done. I am taking the back off and then I am putting hot glue on the edges. 
Um, the first pineapple coasters I did, I just used the sticky and didn't put hot glue and noticed that the edges of them were starting to pop up. So I went in and applied hot glue. So this time I'm just like, okay, sticky is good, but let's reinforce it with some hot glue. Whoa, okay, hello, next project. Um, I am doing this, this is super easy, you guys. That's why I'm rushing through. I had a metal sign from Michaels and I've had it forever. I got this decal online and I'm just putting it right on top. That's why I said this is an extra bonus because it is just so easy. It's like cheating, I swear. Um, and I'm just going to apply this. Watch out, you guys, this thing is sticky. This was actually my second time doing it. The first time I laid it down and it was not where I wanted it to be. So Wait. that's it. Look, that's, no. That was DIY. Got a little something okay. right here. Hang right here. Here we go. Got a little something. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens when your little mom's crap through. All right, DIY number three, four. I think this is four. And it's beautiful. It is my favorite piece of them all. And you know what? I thought it wasn't going to be my favorite piece because of the way it started out. But it is so beautiful. I'm going to leave it in my room on that nightstand. So I took the glass candlestick holders. And um, I'm taking three of these frames. Now I chose these frames because of like that texture the ridges on them i thought it would be beautiful and stand out a little bit more instead of a flat frame and more scrapbook paper from hobby lobby i believe and this looked like plank wood and now i'm taking waverly elephant chalk paint and applying it so this is where you guys i was like oh my gosh this is not working for me so i applied the chalk paint to these and I did it for both, obviously. And as it was drying, I was like, geez, you could still totally see through these. So of course, I'm gonna go back in. I'm going to do a um, second coat of them. And I even dried them with my heat gun to get like a fast dry on them. Thought they were completely dry. I really do think they were completely dry after I did this, um, but when I was doing the second coat on some spots, it started bringing up the chalk paint and like taking it off. So then I got frustrated, but after the second coat, we were good. Okay, so now I'm taking apart our frames, Aubie, and we are gonna go ahead and paint those the same elephant gray color and make sure you guys to get your outer part and if you're OCD like me, even though it was so thin on the inside, it still showed gold. So make sure to get that inside of your frame too. So you don't have any gold or silver, or whatever, peeking out. They do still currently have these frames in stores. So you, they're still available. You can still get them. And I am doing that for all three frames. And make sure you guys get everywhere. I don't know how, but on the 8x10, I was missing like chunks off of the side. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was where my finger was. I have no idea. But make sure you double check your work. I know they're only like Dollar Tree projects and stuff. But for me, I feel like if you're going to do it, do it right the first time. Just because it's inexpensive doesn't mean it has to be unfinished, I guess you can say. Treat it as if you were selling it to a customer because you'll have a lot more pride for it afterwards. So now I'm taking the glass. I was going to use the paper, but figured this is going to be so much easier. And I traced those out to get the insides of our picture frames. And we're going to repeat that step for all three of them, of course. And I got the 8x10, 5x7, and 4x8 for these, you guys, which is pretty standard for a tear tray. And um, I still want to make like the really big ones out of the pizza pan. I still have not done that one. And I'm going to because I want to buy my coffee pot and all that stuff. Okay, now we have to take all of this stuff off. Just be careful. Take your time with it so you're not ripping the entire backing because it is so thin. And make sure to keep those little black hanging hardware. Okay, because you can reuse those. We can reuse everything, you guys. 
And now we're going to put our stuff back together. And I put it on like the tannish looking part on the outside just because it looked a little better. All right, this is when I'm like, I still despise these candles. So I am taking the White Waverly chalk paint and I am dry brushing these. Gosh, my voice sounds weird. I'm dry brushing these all around and for some reason they were like absorbing the paint, which is fine. So I had to kind of go over them again, but I am so glad I added this extra detail to it. Cause as you saw in the video, it just brings the entire tray together with the white and the gray and you know, the farmhouse concept. I absolutely love, I should have just like left these <laughs> and used them as candlesticks holders because they're so beautiful. I might go back and make some candle holders with these. Not like with the, guys, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what? You picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So this is me. I had to go back over it, add a little bit more white, and now we are ready to get started on putting these together. So word of advice. <laughs> Do not eye these. Measure them out. So I'm going crisscross to get my center point. I made a previous like tiered tray thing with the lemons and I totally eyeballed it. It was my first time making it and I eyeballed it and then my husband was looking at it and he goes, you realize that is completely crooked, right? And I was like, no, it's not. It looks fine. So then I like actually stepped back from my table and I'm like, oh gosh, those that is totally uneven. So it's like in the corner of my thing. Oh, anyways long story short it was crooked so I'm using e6000 here and I'm using hot glue and I have the wider part on top because you want it to support that next tier better okay so if you put the thin one you're not gonna have that much support so that is why it's upside down versus right side up so we're making this X again, you guys, on the back of the other frames. And I'm being OCD this time and like literally measuring every side so that I know it is not going to be crooked. So if you're like me, you'll probably end up doing the same. Okay, so I'm putting these upside down, doing more E6000. It's gonna be the same step for all of them, you guys. And hot glue. And this time I'm going upside down. This way I could see where I measured and where the center was. So for this one, okay, this one I just went ham and was like, um, I could probably do this one. <laughs> Look, I'm like, eh, whatever. Okay, you guys, and that was the tutorial. Farmhouse, beautiful. You could put it anywhere within your house. I think my favorite is definitely the tear tray and the coasters. I love, love this tray. Let's see how long it lasts in my room with my kids. It's beautiful. Well, thank you guys for watching. If there's stuff that you would like to see or things that you wanna see made that you've seen elsewhere, just comment down below. I am always up for trying new things. I appreciate you guys watching my video. I'm gonna leave some other videos here that you might be interested and in. make sure to hit my picture to subscribe to my channel. Have a great week. Happy Monday.